Welcome back to Giant Freakin' Robot. In the minds of modern movie lovers, 1985 is the year Back to the Future arrived. But for a long time, another movie shared the title of Most Loved Movie of that year, and that only changed when, inexplicably, strange forces embarked on a campaign to retroactively erase it from existence. But until it was deleted from the universe sometime in the early 2000s, the two 1985 movies everyone was talking about, recording off their television, using a wonky VCR hook to rabbit ears, and renting at their local Take One video stores, were director Robert Zemeckis's Back to the Future and Ron Howard's Cocoon. Oddly enough, Cocoon was originally going to be a Robert Zemeckis film, but problems with the production got him fired. Ron Howard took over and Cocoon became his. Be Mark, action! while Back to the Future earned more money at the box office with its massively huge 210 million take, Cocoon was far more acclaimed. Cocoon won multiple Academy Awards, including Best Supporting Actor Don and, and, Cocoon. and Best Visual Effect for the work of famed artist Ralph McQuarrie. Ron Howard even beat out Robert Zemeckis for Best Director at the Saturn Awards when Cocoon ran away with the Sci-Fi Honors Best Director trophy. Well, that's not important. But now Cocoon is gone, really gone. As in, you can't watch it anywhere. At all. I guess me and your grandma are going away, David. What happened? What went wrong? Is there any way to see it? Stick around and we'll give you those answers. But first, since Cocoon hasn't been available to watch in the United States for decades, it's safe to assume many of you have never seen it. So here's what you need to know about Cocoon. For Ron Howard, it was the movie that turned him into a big deal as a director. Without it, we might never have gotten movies like Apollo 13 and Parenthood. Houston, we have a problem. Made after Splash, but before he did Willow, Howard's approach to making his first science fiction movie was unconventional. It may have been influenced by Splash, given the association both movies have with the water. But Splash is a straight-up comedy, and Cocoon is nothing of the sort. Doctors don't know everything. <laughs> There's never been anything quite like it, before or since. At first, Cocoon is a laid-back movie about the residents of a retirement home. They sneak next door and swim in a pool at an empty house as a minor act of rebellion against their waning years. One day they show up for a swim and see large rocks under the water at the bottom of the pool. They decide to swim anyway and find themselves revitalized. The misery of old age begins to vanish. They regain their health. They start dancing. Gravity, they start having sex again. A lot of sex. Want a piece of candy, little girl? Ben. While Wilford Brimley's Ben is getting busy with his wife. In parallel, there's 80s icon Steve Gutenberg as Jack, the captain of a fishing boat. A group of nice people hire his services for a charter, and he spends the next month ferrying them out into the deep ocean, where they go scuba diving and bring up large rocks. Out at sea, and lusting after the female member of their group, Gutenberg accidentally stumbles into the truth. They're aliens, and those rocks they've been bringing up from the ocean floor are alien pods. The aliens aren't upset at being unmasked, and, after they calm him down, the Goot agrees to keep their secret and assist. It probably helps that one of the aliens is hot. Or at least she is, when she's wearing her human suit. The aliens' intentions seem pure, and they're friendly. So friendly they aren't angry when they find the old coots from the retirement home living it up in their pool. The aliens are Anturians, and as the movie develops, they end up inadvertently teaching the locals lessons about life, mortality, and what it means to truly be human. Every 10 or 11,000 years or so, I make a terrible mistake. <laughs> Eventually, other nursing home residents find out about the pool and its magical healing properties. When they show up uninvited, their careless enthusiasm ruins it for everyone else. Soon, with their mission complete, the Antarians must go home, forcing the old folks of the nursing home to make a difficult choice. What would you do to be young again? We'll never be sick, we won't get any older, and we won't ever die. Wearing its heart firmly on its sleeve, Cocoon has all the warmth that characterizes great Ron Howard films. Helping him bring this story to life is a legendary cast, including Wilford Brimley, Steve Gutenberg, Jessica Tandy, and the Oscar-winning Donna Maci. Both critics and audiences loved Cocoon. 
I like this movie. I liked it too. Mm -hmm. Again, I wish it would, I'd say just more of the old people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the movie was a legitimate cultural phenomenon and one of the biggest box office hits of that year. It was even bigger on VHS, with copies flying off video store shelves as fast as people could rent them. All of this makes the modern mystery surrounding Cocoon that much stranger. This is a major beloved, award-winning film directed by one of the biggest names in Hollywood and filled with iconic A-list actors. Why the heck is it not available to watch anywhere at all? It should be an easy question to answer, but the reality of what has happened to Cocoon is surrounded in silence and mystery. Director Ron Howard has been asked about it and didn't really answer. The same is true of star Steve Gutenberg. The closest we can get to providing an answer comes from an anonymous source dug up by the site Aprox. According to that anonymous insider, the most likely, but not only, reason Cocoon is not available to stream is that the music in Cocoon is not currently cleared for new media or transnational sales. Why the music isn't cleared for streaming hasn't been disclosed, but it's a safe bet that it has something to do with the film's composer, James Horner. James Horner got his start as a film composer in the 70s, but it wasn't until he did the masterful score for 1982's Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, that he became a big player. Wrath of Khan director Nicholas Meyer, working on a shoestring budget for the film, had to go with someone mostly unknown and cheap. At the time, that description fit James Horner. Horner's work on the movie earned him acclaim, and Cocoon was a big stepping stone towards making him a household name. However, the way his contract was negotiated may have been odd and different from the other movies he worked on. An agency was involved as a middleman, and that may have created a rights issue which likely turned into an even bigger problem when, sadly, James Horner died in 2015 at the age of 61. But confusion over the rights to Horner's score doesn't totally solve the mystery. Because Cocoon isn't just unavailable to stream in the United States, you can't get it on physical media either. It was last released on DVD more than 20 years ago and has long since been out of print on all forms of physical media. Copies of Cocoon have become so rare that eBay sellers are now charging hundreds of dollars for them. Making matters even more confusing for would-be viewers is that you can easily be misled by other films currently available. For example, you can rent a movie on Prime Video called Cocoon, but it's a 2022 art house love story. Yeah, my and not the 1985 Ron Howard masterpiece. You can pay to rent the movie sequel, Cocoon the Return, on platforms like Prime and YouTube. I want to share myself with you right now. But trust me, that film is a disaster. I don't know if that's such a good idea in front of all these nice people. You can't even find a good, clear copy of the movie's trailer on YouTube, much less actual scenes from the film. Cocoon is being totally erased from existence. If you're looking for a place to lay blame, look no further than Disney. Cocoon was owned by 20th Century Fox, and when Disney acquired the company in 2019, they got Cocoon 2. And they apparently have no interest at all in letting people see it. The clips I've included in this video were produced by overpaying for one of those eBay copies, waiting two weeks for it to show up, and then digitizing the Blu-ray. As such, what you've seen here may be one of the last traces of Cocoon's existence. If you've got a copy, hold it tight. If you've got the money, go get one of those ridiculously overpriced Blu-rays off eBay before they're all gone and share it with your friends. Cocoon is a great movie. One of the best science fiction movies of all time. And someone out there, some dark and shadowy Disney executive with a lot of power, is doing everything they can to prevent you from seeing it. Sadly, it's exactly the kind of behavior we've come to expect from the once great Walt Disney Company. Like this video to send them a message. Let them know Cocoon should be seen. And subscribe to this channel if you want to help offset the cost required to produce this video. Thanks to eBay shipping fees and technical problems with sketchy Amazon Blu-ray players, this is the most expensive YouTube upload we've ever produced. Was it worth it? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, this has been Giant Freakin' Robot.